Welcome. In front of me I have a ZTE Nubia Pad 3D and today I'll look over unboxing along with a quick look at the device itself. So I just pop it straight open. Now this is the first time I'm actually seeing this device. So let's see what the 3D actually stands for as I doubt it has like 3D display or anything like that. There was one company that attempted it a while back and their devices were ludicrously expensive. So let's see here. We got a pretty hefty tablet. So it's not light. Maybe there is something to the 3D. There we go. So, let's put it up while I check out what's else in a box. Come on, there we go. So I'm gonna set it to the side for the time being. We get some warranty right here. Oh, just paperwork, so I'm just gonna put it back. Come on, close, there we go. And here we get a charging cable only which you can see through the holes, so it's a Type-C to Type-C. Okay, there we go. Yoing that to the floor. Okay, so now the device booted up, it is a bit hefty. I'm gonna go through the setup just so I can see if there is something there in the software. So while I'm going through the setup, let's talk about the display right here. So based on the specifications that I can read, there's nothing special about the display right here. It is an LCD IPS at 120 Hz refresh rate. Whoa, 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 what was that? Well, I did just miss something. Damn, now I feel like I need to do the resets to see what that was there was something about uh 3d you now it i think i know what's this all about okay great so this doesn't work um trying to see what in here would allow me to utilize this supposed 3d now in reality this is not 3d it's just kind of faking the depth so based on that image that I see seen just briefly, I am going to speculate that um, what it's going to do is basically use the front facing camera to track your face. And depending on uh, which side you're looking from, it's going to kind of shift the, the images in there, making it seem like there's actual depth into the display. So it's going to look kind of like if you would put 3D glasses rather than, for instance, if you would compare it to something like uh, VR with the headsets. So it's a little bit different. You're still dealing with a completely flat display right here. It's just kind of shifting it in there to kind of mimic it where things should be positioned if there is actual like depth into the device itself of there's some kind of like thing beyond the display. Uh, but like I said, I don't think I have any way to actually Hello? Like, what am I supposed to do here? Cool. So that's pretty pointless. Uh, maybe this. Um, why would you create a device that needs to have internet connection to utilize its features beyond me? It's just cameras. So that's just bullshit move. Um, I hate this. You can't use the device without internet, which is just kind of like, what is this all about? Everything comes pre-installed right here, as you can see, but yet it gives you a middle finger when you try to use it without connecting to the network. Uh, it just bugs me the wrong way. Anyway, so let's talk about the display. I'm going to kind of skip over the 3D. Maybe I'm going to touch upon it later on um, in like a separate video. But um, going into it, uh, this is a 12.4 inch display, like I said, with uh, IPS LCD display, 120 hertz refresh rate. Uh, then 
it is boasting a resolution of 1600 by 2560 uh, 10 or 16 by 10 aspect ratio with 246 pixels per inch uh, with the glass being on the front corner gorilla glass and and what they calling a 3d light field display which is just bullshit jargon because the display right here is a as the message would state lcd ips so uh that's the technology here not the 3d light field display it's just bullshit jargon that they uh use for whatever software that they're doing to kind of i assume make this kind of like wobble whenever you're looking from different perspectives uh, so um anyway Continuing on, let's talk about the uh, actual internals here. So we have a 9,000 mAh battery, more precisely 9,070. Uh, it can charge at 33 watts, so that's pretty good. It comes with a Snapdragon 888. Um, this device was released in April 11th of 2023, so about a year ago at this point, which even at that point, this device was running an outdated flagship processor, being the 888 that came out in like... 2021 i think it was so it's already a pretty dated there was gen 1 gen 2 and now it's gen 3 uh, which they basically come out every single year so it's three years at least three years behind now so uh the processor right here even at release was already dated which is not really showing uh the best of this device i would say now that being said the device additionally didn't come cheap as it apparently costed about 1300 euros so not only are you getting a shit processor from three years back or two years back at that time uh you're also getting a ridiculous price tag that beats even samsung's which they have had the crown for stupidest prices for their devices just because of software uh, but it looks like Nubia which is a Chinese company decided to uh, you know take away that crown from Samsung uh, which why would anybody spend 1300 euros on a Chinese device beats me considering that many people complain about the software experience of Nubia's uh, though I haven't experienced that myself using like the red magics or stuff like that um, people tend to apparently complain about those considering what you're going to be experiencing here is software primarily uh, and you're overpaying for that it kind of leaves I would say a sour taste in my mouth considering that I would be paying stupid premium for feature that possibly might not work as intended as Nubia apparently can figure out their softwares but like I said I haven't really experienced much in terms of uh, software just bugging out and not working as intended when using red magics like the 8s and uh, previous ones as well so i can't really uh confirm that this is going to be the case now anyway uh let's see if there's anything else that will make up the price right here so moving further down we have a double camera setup at the back so there we go uh 3d light field so i'm assuming this is kind of gonna uh, try to give you some kind of like 3d scanning kind of thing though i'm just absolutely guessing here uh, but based on the fact that these are both identical center uh, sensors being at 16 megapixel f 1.9 27 millimeter wide lenses uh, i would assume that i am pretty correct same thing goes for the selfies selfies right here are both 8 megapixel f 2.2 um 105 degree ultra wide lenses so again they're both identical sensors both of these are exactly the same front and well front at least two of those are exactly the same and then two different ones that match each other at the back now the only reason you would do something like that is if the device can do some kind of like a vr recording which let's see if we have anything in the camera or do i need to do i need internet for that oh no i don't now it is pretty zoomed in and the keyboard is like like off the screen and it's like really really zoomed in too much depth <laughs> okay so i'm gonna try to record something and see what i end up with see what we get there is interesting thing it kind of shows you i guess the green little bubble right here to let you know that it's okay the depth is fine if you kind of get too close uh, it there we go it kind of starts flashing where it's just kind of like 
losing it. I will also yoink this before I proceed. Okay, so that was just a photo. Where's the video? Oh, there we go. So I was trying to get my hand as a kind of, of a depth in there, uh, but the green bubble uh, was giving me this constantly, that it's too much depth. Just what she said. So allow. Whoa, that was trippy. Oh, whoa. That is wild. That is actually wild. Ooh, it kind of screws up with your eyes. Uh, it kind of feels like you're doing the cross eye kind of thing, um, but it actually does give you a 3D image, which is pretty interesting. So, not sure if you can see, there is a switch. So right now we are looking at a normal image, it's just a bit blurry. The moment it detects my face, which I'm gonna point it, you can see it's kind of, sh the camera doesn't... Well, no, it does pick it up. You can see kind of like a shadow right here. There we go. You can see two different after images. Which... Oh, whoa. There we go. You can kind of see this. <laughs> it looks kind of 3D when uh, when doing this, uh, the kind of old style. It is very weird thing to experience. And... I guess it does have actual 3D kind of capabilities, which is pretty interesting. That looks really, really, well, interesting. I'm not exactly sure how to describe it otherwise. It's not what you would experience from, for instance, from wearing a VR headset. It's more like if you would mix it, the holographic stickers, that they kind of, you know, move and they kind of like just change shapes. Uh, you'd mix that with like 3D movie. Uh, it does kind of feel odd on the eye or when looking at this. It takes a moment to actually find where the focus is so you can actually see the image in a okay kind of way. Uh, but it does give you this depth into it, which I actually wasn't expecting it to do it even this well. So yeah, pretty interesting. I guess considering this is not just kind of display or software-wise, it, it seems to work. If you can utilize this in bunch of different applications and stuff like that then this actually could be a really interesting device now that being said the video that it records is obviously in actual 3d so it when it detects you it detects the face it does show two different images at the same time laid over each other kind of like you would do with actual 3d glasses uh, therefore something leads me to believe that you can separate it or it's probably separated, just the display uh, actually, or device renders it all layered over each other. But you could probably use it for something like, for instance, a Vision, uh, the Apple Vision Pro. Um, it would probably give you an actual 3D image with each this uh, each image being displayed onto a onto a separate eye, which is how well, you would typically experience uh, any kind of video playback, 3D video playback in VR headsets. Now, anyway, continuing on, uh, let's see if there's anything other that is novel about this device. So it comes with an SD card reader and built-in storage of 128 gigabytes with 8 gigabytes of RAM uh, or 250 with 8 gigs of RAM with UFS 3.1 storage type, which at that time I'm pretty sure was uh, basically the best one they could offer. So that's pretty good. And uh, yeah, that's basically everything that there is to the device. Uh, I could go into like boring things like fingerprint sensors and all that stuff but let's be honest we expect everything like that and a price tag like this so it's not like it's going to come out of nowhere that it has a fingerprint sensor under the display um or on the side oh this one i think it might be on the side uh right or not let's see compass proximity 
Okay, never mind. It, it, it will come as a surprise that <laughs> there is no fingerprint sensor. <laughs> nice. 1300 euro device. Let's go. No fingerprint sensor whatsoever. Which I guess in this case it might be okay. Considering I'm pretty sure in this case it's going to use the face ID. And with the cameras that it has for this, as it needs to have pretty good ones to give you this kind of 3D image, uh, tracking your face and all that stuff, I would presume that the 3D face scanning right here will do a better job than fingerprint sensor would probably. But in any case, with that being said, it's a pretty novel device. Uh, it obviously won't be for everyone. It honestly won't be for majority of the people. It's obviously designed for 3D video recording uh, and viewing it on the device. So outside of that, it's a just very standard device. It's not like super powerful or anything like that. So obviously it will be a bit uh, pointless to majority of the people if you're not looking for something that can capture 3D videos. Um, and if we remove that, you don't need the 3D, you're left with a very standard device with a uh, basic resolution, nothing like special in terms of the display. It's nice that it has 120 hertz refresh rate, but obviously at the price that it comes at, 120 hertz is uh, basically what you'd at bare minimum expect from a device. Additionally, you would obviously expect a bit of a better processor in here, specifically at the price range. Um, and probably things like under display fingerprint sensor or at least on the power button, you'd expect that. Even if you don't need it, you're paying 1300 freaking dollars. And even with the 3D capability, I'd still believe that uh, it should have been here somewhere. So anyway, with that being said, hopefully you found this video helpful and informative. And if you did, don't forget to smash like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.